NFI Group stock has been on a ride. Uh, investors aren't delighted to hear that there's competitive activity ramping up. Um, that stock down 7% in the past week and down around 27% in the past year, although it has bounced off recent lows. We're joined once again by Paul Subri, President and Chief Executive Officer of NFI Group, formerly known, of course, as New Flyer. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We kind of forget what a big firm this is. Revenue is going to be about $3 billion this year. Uh, and just remind us, how much of that will come from Alexander Dennis, that British firm you took over? So we were lucky enough to acquire Alexander Dennis at the end of May of this year. So we get uh, basically seven months of their revenue. and It's about $400 million U.S. of the total revenue, just north of $3 billion U.S. dollars. And then what will the run rate from Alexander uh, Dennis be uh, uh, roughly? It's a, it's a very seasonal business depending on uh, each year and deliveries, but it's about six to seven hundred million US dollars. Um, the stock has been under pressure. Now, I know that BMO is, is sticking with their market perform. They warn that the backlog just declined further when you rule out uh, acquisitions and that you're talking about margin pressure next year because of competitive price cutting. Um, so is there any reason to buy the shares right now, Paul? Well, you, you know, this is a, a long-term play. It's an infrastructure play. It's not like it's a, a retail stock or something that takes uh, unique times and trends and so forth. Look, at the end of the day, the, the, every major city is transforming from a diesel fleet or a natural gas fleet to trying electric buses. Mm -hmm. So we saw this kind of late 2017, 18, and then now really in 2019, where you'd have a city that's got X installed base, and all of a sudden politicians and pressure say, we're going to try electric buses. So we'll try five or seven or 10 or 15. Mm -hmm. It, in the reality, though, is that their core buys of diesel or conventional buses seems to slow down. So I'm not really concerned that our backlog is burning down. Thank God we have a backlog, the ability to build up and manage our production flows and so forth. The good news is that the effort, the, the investment we've made in the electrification of our, our vehicles on proven platforms has gone over really, really well. I can see that because um, the municipalities, of course, they've got to be cautious. They don't want to be buying a whole bunch of new <laughs> fossil fuel buses and then it turns around people politicians, et cetera, say, why didn't you go electric? Well, look, the reality of it is, it, it, and no disrespect to the politicians, but it's easy to say, let's try electric right now. The reality of it is you've got to get charging infrastructure, the training for your people, the, mm -hmm. the maintenance and the operating people, the drivers, the dynamics of how to fully use the, the regenerative braking and so forth is very different. The other issue is you need to pull the capital up front. You're spending more money on a, on a higher cost electric price. Oh, day right? one. Yeah. Then you've got to figure out how to get that charging infrastructure there. And so it, it's a cautious approach, prudently, it's our tax dollars, of how do you put it in place and how do you migrate your fleet over time. Uh, but, you know, the, the reality is our platforms, all of them, have been around for a long time. Our le market leading share of the buses that we build. And so we can go to any operator. New York City, for example, we've got diesel, natural gas, hybrids, and now all electrics on the same platform. And we can migrate with that customer, which is exactly what we set out to do. Now, now Paul, I, I look at this as, as an ETF guy, as a fund guy. I see that six, six plus percent dividend yield at this point. Yeah. So can you discuss a little bit of the, the dividend policy? That's popping right off the paper. You, you need to a little bit go back in history. Okay. The, the business went public in 2005 as an income deposit security. So we had a really, really solid uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, dividend basically on the, on the equity component, a very strong in, income component on the debt. Uh, we converted in 2011, became a pure common share. But we've always believed the nature of our business. Transportation, buses, is not massive growth. It's a replacement-oriented business. So we've always believed dividend is a core part of our offering and, and the attraction to shareholders. We've increased that dividend yield uh, pretty well every year over the last number of years. We're at $1.70 a share. The dividend yield percent is disproportionately high, obviously, with the drop in our share price mm -hmm. of late. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've set that dividend at a place where we fundamentally believe it's sustainable, independent of peaks and valleys in our performance. And so I think at the end of the quarter, our payout ratio was somewhere in the mid-50s, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a you know a, a, an unnatural place to be, mm -hmm. even with that high, high level of a dividend. Yeah, your, no. your, sorry, your dividend's $1.70 a year, yes. and BMO puts your earnings um, for this year to buck 89, which sounds tight, but going up to 242 next year. Yeah. Look, I, I'm, I'm really pleased. We had some issues earlier this year. We set up a brand new facility in the United States to make parts for all of our production 
production facilities. Mm -hmm. On paper, sounded really good. We stumbled a little bit. Consequently, the parts coming out of that fab facility to the bus lines to build the buses caused a little bit of, mm -hmm. uh, if you will, constipation in delivering buses. Okay, our issue. We fixed it. We're in good place now. So we're catching up on burning uh, through that whip, and we're, we're really excited about moving into 2020. We have a solid backlog, albeit uh, down a little bit, mm -hmm. and the number of electric buses uh, and the diversification of customers. Now the diversification of revenue with Alexander Dennis globally mm -hmm. allows to, to balance the platform. Of course, um, when we look at the riots in Hong Kong, we're going to see probably in the background a lot of Alexander Dennis buses. They have a whole bunch there. Yeah, Alexander Dennis uh, obviously uh, form, you know, driven and, and uh, created in the United Kingdom about 20 years ago went to Hong Kong and they are now the number one uh, builder of buses in Hong Kong. There's 6,000 double-deck buses in, in Hong Kong, which is amazing. And Alexander De Dennis has well over 50% of that market share. Really solid performance. Just remind us, as you look design-wise towards electric buses, they're going to be heavy, presumably, with the big battery. I mean, will they be a heavier vehicle than the regular diesel bus? So it's, it's a little bit of the strategy of each city is going to be unique. Okay. You have weather, you have, uh, you know, grade, if you will, or topography. Uh, you have all kinds of dynamics about route structure and, and uh, the, the deployment during the day. So every bus strategy is going to be different. In general, we've been able to design our buses to basically, if you take a, a natural gas tanks and an engine off and you put the batteries off, sure, it's a little bit heavier, but it has all the same weight and weight distribution profiles. Now, some areas you'll have way more batteries because what you want to be able to do is leave the depot and drive the whole day mm -hmm. before having to charge en route. But again, every situation is going to be different depending on the funding infrastructure, depending on the, where they get the energy from, the traffic patterns, the weather, and those kind of things. Our strategy is to be kind of agnostic and work with a customer depending on their environment as opposed to, do you like my bus and how many do you want? <laughs> Which has been the, the mainstay of New Flyer and MCI for so many years. Um, Paul, we, we've been asking CEOs this after their shares drop. Have you been buying any of the shares lately yourself? Yeah, so uh, our, obviously we just came out of blackout uh, on Monday of, of this week. Previous to that, I had bought shares on a number, a number of previous occasions. Uh, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a big believer in our business. It's, it's not as sexy as maybe some other businesses, but it is a, buses are not going away. At the end of the day, the main uh, way of transportation around cities is, is uh, you know, public transport that has subways, light rail, and buses. If you think about, you see this in Toronto, the ability to add to a subway or add a light rail takes billions and years. You could influence the movement of people in a cities within a year or two with a fleet of buses. Uh, we think we're in a really strong position going forward. Paul, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, gentlemen. Paul Subri, the President and Chief Executive Officer at NFI Group. Coming up.